Previously on Command Modern Air Naval Operations. Let's uh, pause time and see what happens. Mine. And then uh, Chase is on. So the idea is to give him that false hope to keep chasing by sneaking in and hitting their HVTs. Now this is a little something I like to call wave cheesing. It's getting above the horizon to bait sand shots and getting below the horizon to lose them. You know, flying like in a wave. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Command Modern Operations. I'm Eberreg, and this is the Pirate Politics 114 scenario. It's an exercise set in Greece. So, uh, Major Op 4 and Naval Task Force is taking up a station between our mainland and the major islands of Chios and Basara. Concurrent with movements of other Op 4 assets, it appears very likely that this force acts as the screen slash sea control element of a possible invasion action of one or both of these islands or any of the smaller islands in the area. Enemy forces don't really care, though I seem to notice that, uh... <sighs> not for Turkey. You know... Just... Yeah. So, um, friendly forces, all we need to know is that this is a fast reaction so we don't have a lot of tools to play with. My mission is to use my available assets to cause maximum damage to the op for naval force. I'm to commence anti-surface warfare operations at my discretion. Attrition to enemy air assets is welcome, particularly AEW and tanker elements, but is a strictly secondary objective. I have eight hours to accomplish my mission. Be aware that the type time window does not allow for any return flights, unless I'm not to load it, so most slash all the work will have to be done on go. Let's do this. So, uh, I think that's changed from the last time is that the enemy AI is a lot smarter. They're not going to go chasing after one planet and every single planet in their inventory. So, uh, we're going to have to be smarter about this. So, let's run these guys with the... with JSO approaches, short range loadout. And let's go here to Araxos. These guys with the fabrics. So let's go to Neo and Chialos and launch a Viper. Just one. That's all we need. One plus time and see what happens. Actually, let's go to LFC now. And set these guys doctrines so that their writer is Okay, fellas, what is there? Let's bring it down here and back here. Okay, so uh, the Op 4 has gotten some bogey there. So we're gonna have to bait them back a bit. Let's get fellas 1 down to a better. Bring it here. These buildings are speeding up. Okay, so now that bogeys are over flying to Niagara, let's go to Niagara and launch these four branches as a group. Now we're gonna have to be careful so uh, they don't go up uh, too high and get spotted. Actually, let's get fellas one to go to cruise speed. Let's slow down time a bit. And let's slow down time a bit more. Three, nine, 
and uh, let's get flight 133 to move here at minimum altitude. Good to see that they're staying at minimum altitude. And uh, let's get them to fire on these guys. Two micas at this guy on our gun micas. This is a sneak attack at the moment. Don't want to turn on the radar. The radar is in presence. I said we don't want to turn on our radars and put them to our presence. Okay. So flight one three three has released both its mica IRs. Let's get it to return to base. Minimal altitude. And, uh... Okay! That flight was taken care of. Let's bring the last one here and here. And speed up time. Okay, so uh, Op 4 has scrambled more fires. Let's try this one here. These guys are really good. Wait, let's go to Tsunagra and get these Mirages armed with Exorcists. Bring the last one over here. And bring Bella Swine over here. So, um, these guys are going at 480 knots. It takes about two and a half minutes for players to scramble for the Vietnam Shallows. So, if I've done my calculations right, that means they need to be a little less than 20 knots for the Vietnam Shallows. The bikers from here, all three of them. And I got the radars on. Because they don't have long range heaters, just sidewinders. Okay, so I think it's time we scramble these guys. Wait, wait, watch. Just group. Okay, so these guys are airborne. Let's keep them at minimum altitude. Bring them down here. Then here. So, uh, the plan is to get them out of AWACS range before we cut them and show here at that place, so to speak. These guys are going faster right now. So let's get flight 144 to get that military power. Okay. 
but it's good to go at 520 knots. And is it out of it? Okay, these guys have lost track of this guy. Let's break him to move in. Bring flight 144 down to order. Okay, so now they're getting an eye out again. Let's bring this one back. Flight 144 to cruise speed. Last one up to military power. Flight 144 also up to military power. Bring flight 144 down to cruise speed. Okay. And it seems they're out of range. So let's bring them up to 36,000 feet and get them to attack these bodies. Sidewinder to you. To you and a sidewinder to you and a sidewinder to you. Okay, so now they know we're here. Let's bring Bells 1 down to cruise speed. Get it to turn its radars on and turn around. Okay. Slow down time a bit. Okay, so I know I'm here. Turn on the radar. I'll take a sidewinder to this guy and. Uh, Allocate two ram rings to this guy. So let's get into a dog fight with this guy. Turn off the manual overrides. So Velus 1 is firing an amber at this guy. And it seems that he's returning the base since he's damaged. Fire an amber at this guy. Fire another AM ram at this guy.
fire two more aim ramps. Uh, let's get Dulles one to turn his radars off. And let's get these guys to turn their radars off. Let's go to Elefcina and launch rigs. One. Yeah, this, uh, this is really requires a lot of uh, Maybe right this one is airborne, let's put it here. And we're detecting some shipping. So, uh, while we're waiting for these uh, Falcons to do something, I should probably note that uh, the whole the whole point of playing around is to wait for these guys to run out of fuel, go to their tanker fuel, leaving their, uh, leaving their, uh, ships without any sort of fire coming which That's when we're going to need to attack. That's going to be an These guys are arming as fighters. It's going to take six hours to strike those, which we're not going to have enough time by. So let's just sleep and be. Okay, so now these guys are going to the tanker to fuel. Let's go to Tanagra and launch our mirages with Exocets as a group. We're going to need to be careful. Okay. okay so I'm just going to fly the flight line here. Then here, at minimum altitude, afterburner. So the whole point is to not get identified so we don't get fired on. So we can release our exosets as close to the stock contact as possible. And uh, we are indeed staying at low altitude. Why they aren't firing at guy uh, that's off the deck and going at 650 knots is beyond me. But I think it's time we fire on them. Got it. 200 feet above sea level, cruise. Keep them at minimum altitude. Turn off automatic evasion. Get them to go home at afterburner. Uh, get them up to high altitude. So that he can outrun the missile faster.
And I'm pretty sure this thing is But, uh... Let's turn on automatic evasion just in case. Okay. Turn off the manual override for these guys. Let's get Uranus one to land. It's a bit exposed. Okay, let's go to the you know, Flash Bellows says one in. Yeah, I'm gonna lose these guys. There's no way around it, but uh, I'm gonna have to take these guys out. Okay, so uh, move these guys down here. to you, two in rooms to you, two in rooms to you, and two in rooms to you. Okay, return to base of afterburner speed. And go to Mia and Shialos. It actually went better than I expected. And launch this guy. Okay, so that guy's lost, and that guy's lost. Uh, let's go to Nia and Shialos. Abort the launch on this guy. Tell him to since this guy seems to be late. Okay, gonna LF Senior and launch Uranus 2. Bring the Rhinos 2 over here. Okay, let's go to Nia and Shialos and launch LF3. LF3 is airborne. Let's move it down here. Right here. 
And, uh, these guys are ready. Okay, this is a bit of a gamble, but let's just launch a stereo. And bring them over here, and here, and afterburner speed. Tell them not to RTB when they want fuel, since we're going to need to the strike as quick as possible. Bring Bellus 3 up here. Okay, let's get these guys to attack this guy with eight brooches and uh, this guy with eight brooches. And slow down to military power. Turn on the radars. Slide on cruise, come up here. Up to ten on a sign, bring them up here. Bring these guys back. Uh, do not engage defensive, just go up military power to outline these guys. Okay, that went better than I thought it would. Let's get these guys to return to base. Bring these guys over here. And speed up time a bit. Just a bit. Don't get fired on. Military afterburner. Tell these guys to turn off automatic evasion.
Got it to Niagara. To these guys. We are. Okay, so those guys got wiped out. These guys are going to refuel. So, uh, those Vipers' sacrifice was not a day. Because it means I can use these guys to take out this guy. DCS squad will hear them here at active runner speed. Attack this skunk contact. Slow down to cruise speed, go to low high altitude. And uh, you're not RTP just yet. I want you to get in there and start cheap this guy. Put medium altitude, three speed. To minimum altitude. Automatic evasion, no. Low altitude. Minimum altitude. Low altitude. Minimum altitude. Low altitude. Minimum altitude. Low, and so on and so forth. Okay, so now this guy's not on. He's in the actual sets. Let's get these guys to return at base. And that was Power Politis 114. Let's get all these guys to return to base. And yeah, let's uh in the scenario there. Triumph. Three thousand points. I lost two block fifty fal falcons and four block fifty two plus falcons. Whereas Turkey lost thirteen vipers and four ships. So uh yeah. I think that was a uh, fairly successful result. This is Everag signing off.